This hour of gameplay is brought to you by FanDuel. Bet on all your favorite teams on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You're listening to Gameplay with Matthew Cause on TSN 1050. Embrace the odds. I want winners. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Gameplay. I am your host, Matthew Cause. What a gorgeous weekend. What a what a gorgeous weekend to ignore the wonderful weather and just stay inside and watch sports. Actually, let's start here. Let's text the show at 105050. How guilty? How guilty do you feel when you've just realized, oh nuts. I've just spent the last eight hours watching sports. Like on Sunday. You had the, the 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 London game, which actually was an exciting game between Minnesota and the Saints. That starts at nine thirty. You got football all day. You got the Jays sweeping Boston. Their magic number, which we'll get to, uh, for the top wild card spot is now two. But then you look outside; it was beautiful, just gorgeous, just gorgeous out there. Like producer Chris, like, do you feel bad? Like when it's. Uh, when, like I prefer it when it's just uh, let Sunday be a crappy rainy day, so I feel no shame. Yeah, I don't want any internal guilt about not enjoying the sunlight, getting mm-hmm. my vitamin D. Yeah. So yeah, I want to. I want to have a good reason for being on the couch. And it's even worse now because you know, uh, enjoy that sunny day because soon we're gonna go from hey, let's in, let's enjoy the majesty of fall colors to it's winter. We're in a hellish dark scape of nothingness until April. Yeah, and on those days, you have every reason to be sitting on every the couch. Reason. Who wants to walk in, in the snow? Who wants to shovel their driveway? No, no one. one, I say. Yes, yes, yes. No one, I say. No one. You were, were you doing like your uh, 1920s, uh, <laughs> your 1920s impersonation there? Yes, yeah. A little dated. I don't know if everyone's going to get that. Oh, reference. it's dark out there. It's dark like the coal, like a coal pit, I say, like the coal that I shovel into a train. Anyway. So, um, yeah, it absolutely packed. You got the Leafs taking on the Habs tonight, a game you can listen to right here on TSN 1050. Then afterwards, we will join you in progress with the 49ers and the Rams. I don't know why San Fran is favored by a point and a half at home. I'm, uh, I am all over the Los Angeles Rams, the more talented team, and the 49ers are without a Bosa. And without Trent Williams, by the way, the, uh, there's we're never going to have a year where a Bosa plays all uh, an entire season, are we? No, it's never going to happen. No, and it's unfortunate because when they're when they're on their game and when they're healthy, they're two of the best yeah. pass, pass rushing defensive ends in the league. Yeah, and and for uh, which one? Nick is Nick is uh, Charger, right? No, Joey is the Charger. Joey is the Charger. Nick. Nick is and Nick Bosa. Not even just. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I'll take yeah. your word for it. Okay, you said that really confidently. Uh, uh, Nick Bosa <laughs> is just incredible against the run as well. But you know what? We don't have time for hot Bosa talk. Let's get to my opening thought. Time now for Matt's opening thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? And here we go. I mean, it's really nothing more than a self-absorbed monologue, a chance for Matt to rant about something and pretend he's a serious radio personality instead of a gas bag. Let's face it, he stole this idea from Dennis Miller. Now, I don't want to get off on a rant here. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! It is so easy on this Monday, on the Monday after a Sunday of NFL action, to get totally swallowed up by football. You know, and football started with a double doink at 9.30 a.m. with the London game, with the Vikings barely beating the Saints. I would mention the Argonauts, but oof, that was an ugly loss to the Stampeders. Uh, so it ended with Kansas City ripping apart the best defense in the NFL. You had the Eagles coming back from a 14-0 deficit to remain undefeated. The Tua concussion protocol morality debate is alive and well, and it's quite predictable. And the season is crazy entertaining. There's been 49 games. We're in 49 games this year. We're within one score in the fourth quarter this year. That's the most ever through four weeks of a season. But then I heard I heard this sound from Seattle. I think it was on Friday or Saturday. Their 2-1 win over Oakland. It was a walk-off two-run home run to end their 21-year playoff drought. It sounded like this. 3-2 to Cal. The pitch from Acevedo, a drive deep to right field, down the line, the Mariners win this game 2-1, the dream lives, they're going to the playoffs, the drought is over, Cal Raleigh, wow, hey now, hey now, hey now, are you kidding me Cal Raleigh? Ah, that 
was great. Good job, Dave Sims, on that call. And it just sounded awesome. And it must have felt great for that long-suffering fan base with the Mariners. I haven't been the playoffs since Ichiro was like a rookie. Then I remembered, oh, yeah. Like, right at all of just enjoying that moment, I remembered this week is going to be so damn special for Blue Jay fans. Because, you see, there was no drama from an on-field perspective this past weekend. They beat up on the Red Sox. They swept them. They outscored them 25-3. to It's easy for these games to be a bit of a footnote. But let's consider what could happen as soon as the end of tonight. The Jays' magic number to clinch home field advantage in next weekend's wild card series, the magic number is down to two. A Jays win tonight and Seattle losing to Detroit, and Toronto is hosting playoff games for the first time since 2016. And that is a damn big deal, but I feel like it's getting lost. And I, I'm to blame for this, and many of us are. And, and yes, the Jays technically qualified for the postseason in 2020, but that was the, the, the COVID-shortened season. Remember, like 60 games and, and two quick losses to Tampa, and it was over. What do you remember of that playoff series? Bo Bichette had six at-bats and no hits. Vlad had seven at-bats and one hit. You see, this is a massive week for Jays fans, but it feels muted because the team, they, they clinched on an off day, and then, and then afterwards people debated whether or not the Jays should have celebrated in their locker rooms the next day after they, they played and, and won. And, and yes, the, the emotional release is not the same as what happened in Seattle. A 21-year drought is crazy. But this is just the third postseason appearance by Toronto in nearly three decades. Also, this year's felt a bit like a, a bit of a slog, hasn't it? Bo and Vlad had been very good years. By the way, healthy. Both of them played nearly 162 games. Underrated part of those guys is they're available every damn day. Shout out to them for that. Now, these are top-level batters, but their numbers were down from last year. And Jose Barrios has been a disappointment. And whoever the Jays' fifth starter this year has been an absolute disaster. And we had high expectations. Going into the year, it was, could the team hit 100 wins? Will they win the AL East? Did I say least? Hopefully I said East. Vladdy raised the bar. With that quote, last year was a trailer. Now you guys are going to see the movie. And the movie was a bit disappointing. Didn't happen. But... Let's put things in perspective. In the hardest division in all of baseball, Toronto has the third best record in the AL and the seventh best record overall. Same for their scoring differential. After John Schneider took over, team went 42 and 27. And thanks to the sweep of the Red Sox, the Jays should finish with the top wild card. That means Alec Manoa will get to start game one of the wild card series. If and when, of course, the Jays get the top wild card. And with Manoa, if that happens, he pitches on Friday on six days rest. Gosman, hopefully the finger's okay. It should be. He would start game two on an extra day of rest. And we can debate Stripling versus Burrios, and we should. But big picture, the Jays are a day or two away from home playoff games for the first time in six years. I'm excited to see what our hitters will do. Vlad, that monster home run on Friday, the second hardest hit home run of his career. Bo Bichette, 48 hits in September, the most by a player in a month in franchise history. Even Tiosker's starting to warm up. Three home runs and five RBI over the weekend. So when you are debating whether or not to take the over for Cooper Cup for receiving yards tonight, by the way, take the over. He's out of 100 yards his last three games against the uh, 49ers. Or you're lamenting your fantasy team, I have Javante Williams on uh, on mine, yeah, and I had uh, Jonathan Taylor. Tough day for me. Um, or you're monitoring the minutes of Rasmus Sandin. Just try and harness some of that energy we saw in Seattle. The Jays could go to the World Series, and if they do it, it will be because of what they do this week. And that's pretty damn exciting, and that is my opening thought. I'm finished. Because I was thinking about it, we, 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 the Jays you know, get lost on a month, or they can. Just like college football can get lost. And when the Argonauts score two points, they're going to get lost. And all these other stories, because the NFL happens and all the games are close. All the games are one score in the fourth quarter. And Patrick Mahomes did that. 
to that defense, and we're we're swimming in NFL stories. But by like eleven o'clock tonight, the Jays could have the first wild card spot all wrapped up. And you know what? I consider myself in like the top percentile of baseball fans. You are, and you are. By the way, it needs to be said is that if you listen to the show on a regular basis, Chris will start dropping his knowledge of other baseball teams, and I, I still believe you're making up names of players and other teams. Uh, well, you know, maybe I'll start mixing some uh, mixed, uh, some fake names in, and we'll see if you can identify if there's any <laughs> real ones. But what I was going to say is, even me, as in like someone who loves baseball, has loved baseball my whole life, yeah. the, the nature of a 162-game season, it's very hard not to get fatigued. I yeah. think just people who are watching, by the time game 130 is rolling around, people are like, okay, can we just get to the playoffs? I'm ready for this. And then at the same time, the NFL is starting, so it's kind of like this confluence of forces that pushes ba- baseball to the back page. Yeah, it does. And then also on top of it, um, the expectations were super high this year. They weren't met. And it's not that the Jays didn't have a good year. They did. They Again, seventh best record in all of baseball in the hardest division in all of baseball. That is impressive. But your expectations get muted a bit, Paul, and and that disappoints you. Plus, we've known for a long time the Jays were going to make the playoffs with the expanded, um, you know, the so the the expanded playoffs. So that took away some of the stakes when we realized, oh no no no, they've got this. So then you have all, and then again you have the full NFL, and then you get a little complacent. And I was complacent. I've been complacent as well. And then at some point. It was a combination of, oh, wait a minute. They could, their magic number could be zero at the end of tonight. Oh, that's exciting. And then seeing the Seattle fans getting excited. I mean, that does it as well. But we haven't had home playoff games since 2016. That's six years. Making the play, Blue Jays making the playoffs, that doesn't happen very much in this city. It happened in 15. It happened in 16. Before that, it hadn't happened since 1993. And, Counted or not counted, whatever you think about 2020. It was, a, it was an asterisk. I'm good on them for doing it that year. The story of that year, a lot of it was Hunjin Ryu. <laughs> that guy's not even going to be around for this. So, yeah, that's sort of the point of this opening thought is, holy bleep. It is exciting right now to be a Jays fan in this city. Yeah, like it's, it's just a very understated thing. You know, we, we in Toronto, we love our sports. It doesn't really matter what team it is. But I hear you. I, I haven't necessarily heard a ton of hype and a ton of like excitement. And I think it's for all the reasons that you just kind of alluded yeah, to. And it can happen. You know, it's, 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 it's perfectly normal when you, when you, when you consider the reasons and just human nature, you can, you can see why. Uh, let, let's hear from John Schneider. And, and again, if you hear odd pauses, that's just, they decided, um, for the broadcast, they, uh, they didn't, we don't get bleeps, and bleeps are always better than than the pauses. Hundred percent. Yeah, like if if South Park has taught us anything, and they've taught us a lot, <laughs> most of it I can't say on air. But uh, bleeps are better than the silences. But anyway, here's here's John Schneider uh, congratulating the team. Uh, this is something you should never not celebrate. Congratulations to you all. Um, unbelievable effort all season long. You guys are incredible. All right, and enjoy the. Sh- out of this tonight. By the way, there was good timing. The pop of of the sparkling wine. I can't say if it's champagne or not. I do not have visual um, uh, clearance either way because again, it's illegal. Remember that you can't be called champagne unless your sparkling wine is made in the region of Champagne in France. But we all knew that. Um, but the pop of the bottle right when he was saying congratulations, well timed, well timed. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally pretend that I knew what you were just talking about, yeah. the fact that it had to be made in that region. Well, now you know. Now you, now you know. It is illegal. The bottle cannot say the word champagne on it unless the grapes are sourced from the area of champagne. And uh, I'm imagining you can get a pretty hefty fine if you uh, break those protocols. Let me tell you something. You don't want to you don't want to bleep with French wine authority. They will bleep you up. They will come after you, my friend. <laughs> what is the French equ- equivalent for bleep you up? Le, uh, le bleep? Yeah, uh, well, I stopped taking French after grade nine, and I dropped down to general level French. So uh, if you need to know, I can tell you that my eyes are blue and my pen is black. That's about it. I failed grade nine French. I had to go to summer school that year. Oh, really? And the funny thing oh, was, no. I, I still didn't want to learn the French. So yeah. the teacher really tried to draw me in. He tried to, you know, further my education. So he's like, you know what, Chris? 
I'll teach you how to swear in French. Is that something that interests you? And me and my friends were like, yes, I'll, I'll learn all the French oh. you want if that's how you're going to teach it to me. What a great teacher. <laughs> also, what a horrible summer. What a horrible summer for like 14, 15-year-old Chris Horvat. Hey, how'd you spend your summer conjugating verbs in French? <laughs> it was about three weeks, so it wasn't the full <laughs> summer, oh, but uh, we sucks. made the best out of it. Um, going completely off topic, where did this... What's the background of this Leafs sound and the Handmaid's, Handmaid's Tale? Okay, so this is from about uh, about three weeks ago. Okay. Uh, there's a show called The Handmaid Tales. Yes, yeah, so the, of- the, based on the Margaret Atwood, very, very famous book, dystopian look of the future, where women are subjugated to basically their job is strictly to breed, uh, basically to, uh, to, to get pregnant and have lots of children. Yes, and uh, so I saw something on Twitter yesterday where uh, apparently they make a reference to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was having a bit of trouble confirming whether this is real or not, but if you look at the mouth, like like read the lips, mm-hmm. they're saying it word for word. So I have a very hard time believing that this is d- dubbed or whatever. Okay, play, let, let's give it a play for the audience. Here is uh, from, uh, from, the ha- from The Handmaid's Tale. We figured you'd want to get back to Canada, move on with your life, take in a Leafs game. I hear this might finally be their year. I'm not much of a hockey fan. Oh, you'd love it. It's elegant yet brutal. Not wrong. <laughs> not wrong no, at all. Not wrong at all. It is It is elegant and brutal. You know, like like when Nick Ritchie was on the first line for the Maple Leafs <laughs> last year, there's all this elegance on uh, at center and on the one on the one wing and on the other wing, it's uh, it's kind of brutal. No, I think elegant and brutal might be one of the most fitting ways I've yeah. ever heard to describe this current Leafs team. Like, hey, it's elegant when you see Mitch Marner make a spin pass, lands right on the tape of Austin Matthews, and he yes. puts it in the back of the net. And the brutal part, well, we know that happens in April every year. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. But yeah, so I'm like, and I'm, just, I'm trying to find it. I want to find that episode just where the Maple Leafs are. I, I love it. It's like, if this is true, it's like, oh, okay, one of the most famous, you know, uh, works of, of what a dystopian future could look like. And everything is very depressing and, and, uh, abusive. And like, huh, let's see. Let's work at a Maple Leafs joke in the middle of it all. Maybe it's because the show was, ta- it's taped here. It's it's taped here in in, in uh, southern Ontario, and I would imagine much of the viewership is also in Canada as well. Yeah, there would be a, a high percentage. All right, on uh, on the other side, we will get into to week four of the NFL, and we'll start with uh, with DK Metcalf getting carted off the field, not for a knee injury. I'll explain in a moment. You're listening to Gameplay right here on TSN 1050. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Gameplay. I am your host, Matthew Kaz. Gameplay brought to you by FanDuel. Bet on all your favorite teams on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. A couple of people are texting in that it is true, The Handmaid's Tale. They did do that little shot at the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if someone texts in and says it's true, who are we not to believe it? And yeah, the show is often filmed in the Hamilton area. Jacob from Oshawa writes in, uh, that is cringe. For them to be talking with the Leafs. And he also writes in, did you see Antonio Brown at the hotel in Dubai naked holding that lady near his butt? That is crazy. I did see that. And my thoughts, one, I'm at the point now where I just kind of feel bad for Antonio Brown. That guy is not right in the head. And two, I feel bad whoever was in charge of the pixelating. Whoever was in charge of... uh, of all the pixelating of that moment of Antonio Brown in the pool when he was naked, that uh, the work done there. Well, Wait, Mike. Well, I was going to say <laughs> I saw some people saying that it wasn't the best pixelation job. <laughs> I, th- I think it's supposed to obscure things. Yes, usually. it didn't really do that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know what? You know what? You're right. Yes, uh, I go. I go the other way. That was lazy pixelating. At a time when we needed more pixelating, they went light on the pixelating. Anyway, we'll stick with uh, classy football talk. Here is DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle beat Detroit, and the Lions are... You would not expect the Dan Campbell team to be a team that could set an NFL record for the most points scored and a record for the most points allowed. You just figure Dan Campbell, that coach screams every game is 13-10, but not the case. We can get on a football perspective, but apparently DK Metcalf... um, 
He had to go to the bathroom, and uh, he needed to be carted off to the bathroom. Have a listen. Yeah, I mean, I was hurting. <laughs> That's it. I had a little tummy ache. Uh, you know, I had, to, I had to get it taken care of. Was that valet service you got the call? See, I didn't even ask for that. I was about to, <laughs> I was going to jog off the field myself, and then, you know, Strick was like, we got a cart for you. And I was like, hey, might as well. Is this the longest place to go? From yes, it was, yeah. So when I was on the cart, I was I was thinking like yeah it was a it was a good thing we had the cart on standby. Seven catches, 149 yards, and needed a cart to help him go poop. <laughs> Very subtle. Very subtle. It's a classy show around here. All right, real quick about that game. Jared Goff has had four touchdowns and 378 yards. The Lions put up all those points, and they were without their number one running back and their number one wide receiver. And they scored 45 points against Seattle. That, that game had 93 points. And here, I tell you, Chris, that there's an NFL game with 93 points, over 1,000 yards, one team would never punt, and both quarterbacks would throw for over 300 yards. I only give you that information. And, and then I tell you the quarterbacks are Geno Smith and Jared Goff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would not believe it. Uh, when you look at how they both those guys have played all year, I think both of them are in like the top three or four for touchdown passes. Yeah, like it is remarkable how well they've played. Uh, very bizarro stuff. You know, the worst part is there is some jackass in fantasy football. There is some jackass, and and they took running backs and receivers early as you should, as you should. They're like ah, I'm just gonna. You know, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna take a quarterback. I'll just grab one at the end. And they grab Jared Goff, and they're telling all their friends, "Oh yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I knew Goff was gonna have this kind of year. Finger gun, finger gun." It's like, shut up. Yeah, I have one league of my many leagues where I took a quarterback high. I mm-hmm. took Josh Allen in the second or third round. That is the only league I am one in three in. Yeah. So my, <laughs> my anecdotal proof is that yeah. don't take a quarterback early. It screws with the rest of your team. Uh, some of the other big stories, and we'll get Dominic Padula from TSN Edge. will join us in just a second. Uh, the Eagles are undefeated, and Jalen Hurts playing in crappy weather down 14 nothing. And then the Eagles score like 29 straight points against a good Jacksonville Jaguars team. Um, every game in the NFL is a one-score game in the fourth quarter, 49 of them so far this season. That is a record. The Lions' offense and defense are on pace to be awesome and horrible, all thrown into one. And uh, yeah, so just some of, and, and Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs put up that many yards and first downs, and they didn't punt until 55 seconds left against Tampa's defense. Incredible. How about that uh, How about that little shovel pass by the goal line? That was something. To Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, where he rolls out to the right, rolling, rolling, avoids one guy, then does a 360, then has like 10 Tampa Bay defenders coming at him, and he does some weird shot put with the ball over the mass of humanity, Right into the hands of Clyde Edwards Hilaire for a touchdown. I don't know if you've heard me use this term before, but there's certain players in sports that are just, <clears throat> excuse me, magic. They're just honestly magic. Like, yeah. To me, the one that jumps out to the top of my mind is Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. When you watch him, it's like you almost can't believe what he's doing. Yep. I-, I think Patrick Mahomes is firmly in that category for me now. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has also been in that category for Not a long this, time. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I, I, how can you not love Patrick Mahomes? He's probably the most entertaining player in the NFL. 417 yards, 27 first downs, 12 for 17 on third down against a defense that was ranked, uh, that was ranked fourth in yards allowed and first in points allowed. It's not like we can marvel at what Seattle and Detroit did, but degree of difficulty, what Kansas City did on Sunday night in that win over the Bucks, incredible. Dominic Padula from TSN Edge joins the show next. A reminder to everyone still alive to go to tsn1050.ca if you are still a part of the First Up Football Survivor Pool. This is Gameplay. I am your host, Matthew Cause. You know the rules. You win, you move on. You choose wrong, you're gone. If you miss a week, you are eliminated. Last person standing will score a free set of Rodex tires along with install at your local Cal Tire, as well as 2500 bucks in cash. Plus, the show is randomly giving away three more sets of tires to lucky winners throughout the NFL season. TSN 1050's first-up football survivor pool, sponsored by Rodex, an exclusive 
Cal Tire brand. So a ton to get into in week four in the NFL and also get you set for the Monday nighter. And that game will be joined in progress. The Rams are traveling to the 49ers and we will pick that up at the conclusion of the Leafs and Canadians preseason game. Join me now to talk all things NFL from TSN Edge. It is Dominic Padula. Dominic, good afternoon. Thanks for joining the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's uh, it's unbelievable that we're already through the first four weeks of the NFL season. One more stop tonight, but it's been a fun ride so far, so let's hope we can keep it going. Well, it, you know what? Let's start with the, you used the word fun ride, and it has been. There's been, I believe it's 49 games so far this year. And I think all of them, except for one, was a one. Uh, there was it was a one score game at some point in the fourth quarter, and that is a record for the NFL through four weeks. Have you seen that bleed into just and into the lines in terms of maybe don't bet uh, don't bet heavy favorites? Oh yeah, absolutely. We saw that again yesterday. Uh, although the Jacksonville Philadelphia result was absolutely yes. wild, like. If you bet on Jacksonville going into that game and you're up 14 nothing with the ball and you end up losing and not covering, that is really tough. Um, I thought that the Texans were a little bit of a fraudulent team with who they faced for, through the first couple of weeks. And then the fact that Justin Herbert looked good enough uh, going into yesterday, I thought you know that, that spread, you might have actually been getting a little bit of a discount at Chargers minus 5.5 or lower. Um, but the rest of the board, like we saw... I guess there was, let me count real quick, there was 11 games with a spread of three and a half or lower. Mm. And we saw it play out yesterday, a lot of tight games. And and it's remarkable when you look at the difference between some of the higher scoring games and lower scoring games. Obviously, scoring's been down across the NFL. Um, but then you got the, the Patriots putting up um, 24 points against the Packers uh, with their second and third string quarterbacks. And you got Detroit and Seattle going off for 90 plus points in a high event game where if like me, you're on some of those player props, it was easy money cashing with guys like Jamal Williams or Rashad Penny, Tyler Lockett all had big games. So it's been interesting to watch the first few weeks. It's, it's, it's almost as if Teams are adjusting to what they're seeing around the league, and and I'm not sure that they're all arriving at the same time, but if you're paying close enough attention, like, say, to how bad the Detroit defense has been throughout the first few weeks of the season, it opens up the opportunity to bet on a guy like Geno Smith or Rashad Penny or Tyler Lockett, and maybe, maybe the rest of the market's a little slow to move on them, but Geno Smith puts up 320 yards and two touchdowns, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, there's an opportunity if you're seeing it. So that's why it's been so much fun, I think, throughout the first four weeks. And just to add to that, part of it is is uh, avoid, you know, you can find value in the non-sexy players. We all are going to take the over for Cooper Cup receiving yards tonight in the Monday Nighter. Um, but sometimes it's the lesser known players. And by the way, uh, a couple things there. One, Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. 340 yards, two touchdowns, no picks with that busted up ribs. Uh, a great sign for the Chargers, especially because they had a rookie left tackle. That game, though, was 27 24, um, you know, midway in the fourth quarter. And shame on Seattle for allowing Detroit to get all those points and yards. Detroit was out their number one running back and number one receiver. But let's circle back for a second. I think maybe the most, the two most impressive things I saw this weekend, Dominic, was the Chiefs offense doing what they did against the number one defense in Tampa Bay. And then Jalen Hurts and the Eagles coming back easily after trailing 14 0 against a good Jags team. Yeah. And I think part of the reason the Eagles struggled early on a little bit, well, obviously you had the pick six, which is part of the equation and and helped Jacksonville jump up to that early lead. But the weather didn't do them any favors. They scored the Eagles 29 points in a game where Jalen Hurts didn't have a touchdown pass. He only threw for 204 yards, but obviously picking up the slack a little bit on the ground, he had 38 rushing yards in the touchdown. And then Miles Sanders, um, a few people were playing towards a big game for him in the rain. He goes off for 134 yards and two touchdowns. He had a couple big plays, including a 35-yard touchdown run. So definitely seeing the Eagles lean a little bit on that ground game, and it's a testament to how talented they are. When you look at who Jacksonville faced uh, the first few weeks, especially that game against the Colts at home where they shut them out. Um, Jonathan Taylor couldn't get anything going on the ground. Matt Ryan couldn't get anything going through the air. We wondered how good this Jacksonville defense would be. 
They start the game off incredible against Philadelphia, but it's a testament to the Eagles is I think they're up there with the best teams in the NFC and in the NFL right now. You look at what they're doing on both sides of the football, and I think we really saw that coming together with the ground game in the rain yesterday. Just further proof that they're able to excel even in those tough conditions that they might face if they have home playoff games uh, in Philadelphia. And then Kansas City, like, I don't know why so many people were down on the Chiefs this year. I get the loss of Tyree Kill, but it's still the best quarterback in the NFL when you look at other guys around the league, especially a guy like Aaron Rodgers, where he's consistently showing up and getting that team uh, into the playoffs despite the lack of, of talent around him at wide receiver. I mean, obviously, Devontae Adams he had in previous years, no longer the case right now. Um, but the idea that losing Tyreek Hill on its own would just completely limit what this Chiefs offense can do, I, I actually think it was sort of the opposite in the sense that you still have Travis Kelsey, main guy at tight end, as long as he's healthy, he's going to be the number one there. But you have all these other pieces. I think Juju Smith-Schuster's flashed the guy over the middle. Uh, Valdez Scanling had a couple big plays, including a 36-yard catch yesterday, showing off uh, his ability as a vertical threat. But Cole Hardman could have had a touchdown. No. Wide open in the end. No, <laughs> no, hold, stop. Dominic Padula <laughs> from TSN Edge is joining us. I was waiting for it, and you are hundred. You are 89% right in everything you said. Do not use the words McCole Hardman. Uh, he, like that, uh, I've had him before, and he fools us every time. The Chiefs are great. There was receivers doing all over the place. Um, the KC ran the ball 37 times for 189 yards. I will not have anything positive said about McCall Hardman, and I'm saying this as a bitter fantasy football player. Well, you cut me off at the best part. Isaiah Pacheco, uh, seventh round pick. I, I don't know if you watched the game last night. I'm assuming you did. But yeah. My goodness, 11 carries for 63 yards. Um, he looks like he could be the real deal, and certainly to your point, 189 yards on the ground. Um, that offense is, is moving pretty good right now, so as far as I'm concerned, the Chiefs are still a team to beat in the AFC West. How are the 49ers favored? No Trent Williams in the lineup. Uh, we saw how bad Jimmy Garoppolo looked last week. I think the Rams are obviously the more talented team. Is this just because of home field advantage and every now and then Matt Stafford loves turning the ball over? Yeah, I think it's a mix of both Matt Stafford, the turnover issues they've had. Um, he didn't throw a touchdown pass last week against the Cardinals. Uh, 49ers have won six straight regular season meetings against the Rams, home field advantage, coming off a loss. Um, and, and to your point, if Stafford's turning the ball over or not able to throw the ball downfield consistently, it's going to be a problem. But this one's interesting for me because I actually – lean Rams early, especially with the Trent Williams injury, which, what that does to the 49ers offense. Um, the fact that it's the line is still right now San Francisco minus one and a half, it's two at some spots. Um, I think it's a testament to how, how they've fared overall with, with Kyle Shanahan as head coach against Sean McVay. As I mentioned, 6-0 in the regular season, although they lost that playoff game last year. Um, the thing that stands out to me is the fact that the line hasn't moved. Uh, it looks like the public's on the Rams. Uh, despite that, hasn't moved off San Francisco as a small favorite at home. Um, usually that's a sign of caution for me, although I will admit a couple weeks ago, Patriots-Ravens, we saw a similar thing play out with the Patriots as a home dog. I was all over the Ravens. The line didn't move despite the fact that the public was all over the Ravens, and the Ravens ended up winning um, by double digits, so comfortable there. I lean Rams, but for me, um, I think you look in a different direction, and I think you look at Cooper Cup. I know you mentioned it off the top, uh, a little bit of a low-hanging fruit, but Cooper Cup has absolutely dominated the 49ers. And to your point, Matt Stafford hasn't looked great. So on the road, primetime game, they want to get the win against a division rival. I, I think he leans on Cooper Cup the same way we saw Mahomes lean on Kelsey and Brady lean on Evans last night. Which bet do you like more? And we'll leave you with this. And we're going to do a cross-sport bet with Dominic Padula from TSN Edge. Cooper Cup over 93.5 receiving yards. Um, I got to take a look. I think it's uh, what, what the what the numbers or Aaron Judge to hit a home run at plus two fifty. Take into account value and everything else. You can only place one bet over for Cooper Cup or over for Aaron uh, uh, for Aaron Judge. Over for Cooper Cup. It's my best bet. I think Judge has struggled uh, last couple of games. I think he he knows that he's running out of time. Um, hasn't hit a home run against Perez. One for nine in his career. Uh, 
uh, absolutely Cooper Cup dominated 49ers last year, went over 100 yards in all three meetings, including the NFC Championship game. So I'll go with Cooper Cup over. Um, real quick, do we have, and if we don't, it's okay, because I'm now throwing you on the spot. Do mm-hmm. we have a certain sting there, producer Chris Horvat? I am looking for the cowardly bet of the day. If we have it, hit it! Why, you're nothing but a great big coward. Time for... You're right, I am a coward. Matt's cowardly bet of the day. Unless you're too scared. Cooper Cup, to have over 25 yards, minus 20,000. How uh, cowardly a bet is that, Dominic? No, oh, that's terrible. I didn't even know you could bet that. I just looked it up. It's right here <laughs> on FanDuel. So I, I'm trying to I'm trying to see what is the safest bet. Maybe a Cooper Cup, uh, fifty yards minus nine hundred. Yeah, it sounds pretty safe to me. Cooper Cup. Maybe maybe you parlay that with a Debo Samuel uh, and, and actually get a decent number out of it. But yeah, that's. Uh, that's pretty low. <laughs> Let's see. Cooper. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. If you oh, were so heavy, I apologize to producer Chris. If you want, here is. Oh, we've never done this before. The cowardly parlay bet of the day. Debo Samuel, 25 yards or more. Cooper Cup, 25 yards or more is minus 784. So if you put down $50 on that, you'll win $6.38. This guy's such an idiot here. Thoughts, Dominic? I can't even entertain that. That's awful. I would never do that. <laughs> that is a great thought. Thank you so much for joining us. Read his work on the morning coffee at tsn.ca slash edge. Thanks so much, Dominic. Thanks, Matt. Talk soon. Enjoy the game. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That is Dominic Padula from TSN Edge. All right, we'll uh, we'll take a break, and uh, maybe I'll be shamed more by my producer as uh, as we look at other cowardly bets for the Monday Nighter right here on Gameplay. All right, I'm going to let my producer brag for a moment. He is such a nerd. He is such a nerd. And the thing is, is no one knows much about baseball teams beyond their own team and teams in their division. That's it. That's how it goes. Beyond that, we know Otani and Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge obviously, in the American League East. And that's basically about it. But um, the Seattle Mariners catcher with that two-run home run in the bottom of the ninth to beat Oakland 2-1, clinching Seattle, getting their first uh, playoff spot in 21 years. I knew nothing about Cal Rally until I heard the sound this morning driving into work. By the way, make sure to check out Steve Phillips every Monday and Thursday on First Up at 6.30 in the morning. They often replay it at 9.30. But uh, you were bragging about your Cal Rally knowledge. Yeah, only catcher in MLB uh, to be 25 years or younger and hit 25 home runs, and he's also top five in uh, defensive war. So they got a nice one there in Cal Raleigh. How do you know? What? No, not how do you know that. Why do you know that? Uh, I follow. I don't have the name handy, but I follow a really interesting uh, Seattle Mariners uh, stats writer on Twitter. Uh, he, I, I saw that from him uh, a little while ago. Uh, so yeah, that's how I know. Okay, it. okay. You fo- does he have a lot of followers? No, actually, I think he's uh, <laughs> he should have more. Damn it! Uh-huh, I should have more. So Jose Barrios gets the start tonight, and you know, very simple. Jose, here is your goal for this for this start, and this is going to be your last start of the regular season. Try to make John Schneider's job difficult. That's it. Go out, go eight innings, dominate, and try to at least put a seed of doubt about who starts in game three of the wild card. Now, again, this is goes on the idea that the, the Jays will get their magic number to zero. It's at two right now. Um, and if uh, all they, if they go two and one, obviously, anyway, we know how it works. So, um, if, if that happens, then we know it's going to be Manoa in game one. It'd be Kevin Gosman in game two, as long as the right finger is fine. There was a cut, which is why he had to leave early against Boston over the weekend. But make Schneider's job a little more difficult about who gets the start, uh, between Stripling and Jose Barrios, even though it should be Stripling. So I was going to say, that means in your mind, you think undoubtedly it should be Stripling. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely should. I guess it's not, it, it's what, it's what's Ross Stripling's done all year. All, like to me, would, doesn't that kind of send a message to the team? Like, I, I don't know. Like maybe they, don't, maybe they don't care about it, but it's just to me, it's, it's Stripling is game three and then you have Barrios ready to go. He comes in like just like a tag team. Just tag me in. 
So I'm with you. I, I, if you looked at sort of the consistency that Stripling has given all year, I don't even think it's close because Barrios has been Jekyll and Hyde. But I, I do wonder, if, if you do get the home series, how does that kind of change the, the approach of John Schneider maybe? Because Jose Barrios has been pretty decent at home, right? Yeah, but he's still like just he'll still have that blow up two two and two thirds, seventy three pitches, giving up five earned runs. I just I just I just want boring. I just want boring old Ross Stripling. Let him go through the lineup twice, and then after that, just pull him. Go full Tampa Bay Ray, and even if he's got a no hitter, a perfect game. You say, okay, that's it. You're done. Uh, we know the, you know, we we know what the splits look like when you go through a rotation a third time. Then bring in Jose Barrios. You know, we, we talked about sort of the home road splits and how that might factor into who starts. Yeah. To me, it also depends on what team they're facing. Like, at this point, it doesn't look very likely that the Blue Jays will face the Guardians. But I will say, if that had happened where the Blue Jays had to go face the Guardians, I am not starting Jose Barrios under any circumstances. No. They are a total contact-oriented team. Yeah. The other two teams, the Mariners and the Rays, they strike out a bit more, so I think Barrios could find some success there. But I think it really depends on what team you're facing. And I like this bet. Uh, my producer will throw in different bets um, throughout the lineup. Bo Bichette to record two-plus hits tonight. Plus 185 on FanDuel. And again, for people who don't really bet, that's okay. It just means you bet 100, you win 185. You bet 10 bucks, you win $18.50. And he's, uh, he said two plus hits in seven of his last 11 games. No Blue Jays had more hits in one calendar month than Bo Bichette with 48 in the month of September. That's a good bet. That's good value. Yeah. And he's going against Dean Kramer, who is not a hard throwing guy. He's kind of yeah. sitting in the mid 90s. So I think that, yeah, it sets up well for him for sure. Speaking of baseball, we'll stick with it on uh, on the other side. Mitch Banning, who covers the team for Sports Illustrated, he will join the show next, and um, you know we'll just get his his overall thoughts about what is the ceiling for this Jays team as the playoffs are approaching. That's coming up right here on Gameplay. This hour of Gameplay is brought to you by FanDuel. Bet on all your favorite teams on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. 